All right. Let's go. See, we're technically back. It's a season three, and we have, man, a, a dude that has been hitting 2021 hard, came in 2022 even harder because we needed, I think we had like two, about two months working on this, but we have Derek, his brand name, and, and you got to check it out, is Los Homies. Yeah. <laughs> So let's talk a little right away. What is Los Homies? Los Homies is the best backyard gourmet hot dog you'll ever have. <laughs> Hands down? Yeah, guarantee. Damn. I've seen, you know, had to start doing a little bit of research. You get sold out pretty often. Yeah, it happens. It happens. So what? What's the difference? What, what makes your gourmet better than anybody else's? I mean, hot dogs, I mean, everybody likes hot dogs, so it's like a, an American staple thing. But as far as the quality, I mean, that's something that varies between, like, you know, different chefs. So for me, I just put a lot of quality into the product that we use and, you know, give it to the people. What what got you into this? Because I don't think some no, somebody just wakes up and says, hey, I want to be in selling hot dogs or make hot dogs. No, I was just tripping about this, uh, <laughs> actually. Um, Let's talk about uh, it. Around Christmas time. So, yeah, for me, I'm more of an entrepreneur, business person. Uh, I never thought I would be selling hot dogs. But the more I started to understand business, mm. you know, growing up, I understand, you know, understood more of like the hustle. Yeah. It's not, you know, too much of the product. It's more about, uh, you know, different ways of selling it. Definitely. So for Los Homies, it all started with uh, being a part of a bigger project um, with a couple other friends that uh, having the community in mind. So it was going to be somewhat of like a indoor-outdoor um, eatery project. And so for some reason, that project was no longer to continue, so... From there, Los Homies was created by me and two other members, and we just wanted to do something like, uh, you know, something still in the culinary field, but... Have you always been a chef? Nah, nah, really. I'm not too much of the cook, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'm not going to lie. I'll just get high and come up with recipes. And so... They say when you, you get know, high, that, you come up with the best food. Yeah, right? So... I mean, yeah, your I mean, taste buds just talk to you. So So it just spoke hot dogs. Yeah. So basically from there, we just wanted to do something, and then boom, COVID hit. So this Mm. idea started in 2019. Damn. And then, you know, two of the difficult questions of, like, where where are we going to pop up at, you know, and then boom, COVID hit. And so that took away so many different options. So from there, the idea just sat. And then uh, during 2020, on Juneteenth, there's an area in L.A. called Lamert Park. They have a uh, Juneteenth celebration. I think this was their second or third year. Yeah. And so we took part in that event, and the the love from the public was great. It was uh, – we sold out for the most part. Um, I think we had a line from, like – the event was from, like, 2 to 9, and we were booked from, like – Sold out line from like three to like eight p.m. just nonstop. So it's cool. Yeah. So, how did uh, you know how I just said earlier? A lot of people on the podcast they all they're all entrepreneurs. They're all doing something with their life. They all have the a- aspirations of making something of themselves and building a name for themselves. Mm-hmm. So, take us through that process of how do you land events? <clears throat> how do you get to events? What does it take to prepare for an event? Um, how do you land events? Yeah. Uh, I used to do life insurance back in the day. So I'm familiar with the cold calling and, you know, finding your own leads, you know, type of strategy. So I just implemented that same energy to Los Homies. So Instagram, I mean, everything nowadays is just a, a, on Social a platform. Media. You know, you got a screen in front of your face yep. pretty much 90% of the day. So And you think about, what is it, like? 10 hours during the day total, yeah. seven hours during the day total. So um, everybody's always on their phone looking. Exactly. 
And everybody's always hungry. Yep. So I just took that to my advantage and just start researching events and clicking on when people post when they're at certain places and just start. I have two pages. I have the Los Homies page and then I have my personal page. So I will follow everybody on my personal page and then I would send all the information to my Los Homies page. Then I would hit them up through Los Homies. And so that was like my strategy. And yeah. since then, um, it's crazy because I have a pretty busy schedule with a cool list of between events and a bunch of breweries too. Mm. Yeah. Everybody wants to get drunk. And eat <laughs> right? some good food. Dogs and brews. So I was thinking about this like the other day. Obviously, the street vendors, I think most of them have a list of when events are happening because you get out of a concert, a game, or some sort of event, and they're all just lined up outside. Yeah. Did you take that in consideration to Los Homies? Or did you want to kind of just get away from that type of um, event? I wanted to not not steer away from those because I'm still open you know, to all kind of events because... They're you know, wild, man. You get yeah, out of, like, a yeah. Laker game or something and you're either... Or a Dodger game, you're all drunk and you're hungry. Those smack. Oh, okay. You talking about that approach. Well, yeah. yeah actually, um, so I created a, a, a side hustle cart as well. So you know how predominantly most of the carts that you see out there, they're all red, right? Correct. And, you know, typically all Hispanic. You know, Correct. You know, love, love to them because, you know, they... Basically, to me, created the hustle. Um, and so I just took mine one step above. I just painted it powder blue. I got a car magnet of my logo and slapped it on the front, IG on there. So now when I go out, you, you know, I'm the only black dude, <laughs> you know, so you'll see out there. And then, um, you know, my car is way different because it's powder blue and it has my logo on it. Yeah. It doesn't say... You know, delish, delicioso hot dog, and then what, three for what a number, you three know dollars, two for five. Yeah, and then yeah. as far as the quality that I provide, um, I even put my hot dog buns in a clear bag so nobody sees, you know, the brand that I use. But yeah, everything that I provide is just is better quality for sure, for sure. Because I so, use a brioche bun on the dog. Um, the size of it is a little bit like. A little bit more girth, you know, pause. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Just just in general, just better. Yeah. So, with, obviously, the, and I've told you this, or I told you this the other day, like, the street vendors, you know, kind of getting a little bit into a deeper aspect. But the, when the, all that stuff is happening, you know, attack on street vendors and all that stuff, did you look into that? Did that affect you in any sort of way? Did it, like, move you differently? Did it raise red flags for yourself? Oh, yeah, big time. Um, as far as affecting me, yeah, we're human. So, you know, when you see other individuals being treated a certain way for whatever reason, it should affect you. Yeah. So, you know, that part sucks. But it did bring a lot of awareness to, you know, a side hustle that, you know, most of us, we glorify when we go to street markets and we go to organized events, but when you see these same individuals doing it, you know, on their own hustle, yeah. you know, it, it should still be respected the same way. You Correct. don't, you don't see that. So it brought awareness to that. Um, but as far as that imp me implementing that to those homies, it made me strategize on, you know, I'm very competitive, so I want to just crush all street vendors as far as, you know, that's in my realm. You, so you think I, that's that's a big uh, factor in oh yeah. being a business owner? Yeah, big time. Because um, if if you're if you're doing it just for you know your heart, great. But if you don't have that competitive edge, taking it to the next level, I could could only imagine be a little bit more difficult. Damn, that's true. Because I mean, ever I think the thing, especially with twenty twenty one, I think brought up. Uh, like a lot of podcasts, a lot of business, 2022, and it's just like everybody, oh, new year, new me, new goals, new aspirations. But we fall, we fall right back into the same shit where either we're too tired, where things get too hard, other factors are playing in effect. So you said you started it during a pandemic. What was that, that process through your mind that said, I'm not going to stop? I'm going to continue this. I'm going to get this going. I'm going to make Los Homies happen. Yeah. 
Well, as far as the uh, origination of it, I can't take 100% credit because I did have uh, partners, partners in the beginning. Yeah. Um, you know, due to whatever the universe has in store, you know, those members are no longer a part of Los Homies. Uh, you know, respects to them. But um, you think it's because, like, the vision part of it? Uh, or is it, like, the time you got to put into this? You know what? I mean, I can always speculate and have my outside opinion, but... To me, that would be like a debate that I would like have, like if they would be here type of thing. Because like, <laughs> if we you know, we like, got more microphones, we could set this up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. But you know, like I always like you know for people to be able to speak their truth for and, sure. and not it be a one sided story. Definitely. So you know, uh, lo- love and respect to them. But what I can say as far as my my personal vision on Los Homies, the name, the logo. Just um, how the business was thought out to me is different than your average uh, street vending business because I see it graduating from there and then graduating from the next step and the next step and so on and so on. So to me, the idea that I see Los Homies is just being an authentic uh, Angelino business, you know, that provides, you know, adult culinary experience. Um, We always go to the OC and yeah, we see nice businesses and stuff, but like, to me, when you when I think of L.A., I think of black and brown. If you take out black and brown, there is no L.A. I mean, because it was created, you know, with yeah. Indian and black, you know, families, et cetera. But do your research. But um, <laughs> Do your own research on your own time. Uh, pretty much, you know, I just, I see Los Homies being no different than like a Raising Cane's or like an In-N-Out. You know, where you're, you're you're putting yourself up there with, yeah. the, with the top dog, so to say. Exactly. You know, just with a, a consistent menu and then the 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 look of what we do and, and you know, how Los Homies is going to move forward as a business. Everything is family friendly. You know, mm. when you think about, you know, some of the best, you know, uh, people on IG, you know, they got their their food trucks or, you know, they do plates, you know, and all kind of different stuff. And it, it slapped, too. But it be in the hood, you know, and some people be like, you know, I don't want to drive there. I don't want to be there. And no disrespect to the areas, but when you, when you provide something, what, uh, a more of a universal approach and appeal without giving up your authenticity, like that's, that's great. So yeah. That's what Los Homies is. So taking it back just a little bit more, um, with the idea, how you said, you know, you brought it, this wasn't just brought up just you by yourself, but taking the the idea, the support, support systems, was that something difficult or did people shut it down? Like, you know, the reason why I'm saying this is because, and we talked about it before, I put it always on my social media, that when you come out with an idea, with a vision, with a goal, you, and I we heard it earlier, right, that when you speak it, when you speak big dreams to small people, like they... They shut it down right away. And sometimes it is your own family, your friends, et cetera. And it stops a lot of people. So you, the way you're moving with those homies, I mean, again, tap into that page, see the events, what, you know, what they provide. Again, it's not just the food, but it's everything behind it that goes into it. So how did that, did that affect you in any way? Was there like... People shutting down the idea. Oh, yeah, like the the road is lonely. Mm, um, yeah, exactly. You know, uh, doing this now, like my my vision and the way I think is is uh, you know I I grew up bi coastal, so I also grew up in New Jersey, so I was around like a lot of Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Italians, um, uh, Haitians, and Jamaicans, and like all these like beautiful cultures. And then now being on the West coast, being around, uh, Jews, Samoans, Filipinos. Uh, the reason why I bring up specifically these groups is because, uh, no disrespect to anybody else, but these, these groups are like insanely family oriented, you know, yeah. like it's crazy. And so to me, that's the same way I think, you know, business, you know, to me, you know, I guess like my, uh, mentor, even though I haven't spoke to this person, would be like Jay Z. Mm. Like, even though people just see the way he moves, Correct. like just through music, like there's so many business plays that he's a part of that, like you'll never hear of. But like, you know, knowing that you know, you know, just yeah, it's I, dope. Because when you listen into them, bro, like I think one of the dudes that I mean, 
maybe a lot of people don't listen to his music or just know him from certain songs, but like, um, oh, just fucking lost his name. Look at that. <laughs> uh, Rick Ross. Mm. Mm, when he speaks, it's not just the music part. It's the way he speaks about his business. Yeah. Talking about his old school cars, his pool, which is like the largest in the United States. <laughs> yeah, he got the biggest house. Yeah, he was like, they're assets. You know, they, yeah. they, they provide money for me. He was like, basically, if you have an old school car, you know, just instead of using it and then wanting to sell it, just leave it in the garage. Let it get dusty. That's going to build a value into Appreciate, it. Appreciate yeah. So it was, to me... And then the other one I really listen to is Kevin Gates. Mm. The way he moves, the way he speaks, it's just, again, not just the music part. And how you said, a lot of people don't understand, but, like, his power power team with, with his wife, you know, owning a weed, weed shop, not shops, but plants, and the way they're moving, farming, mental health, soul. Oh, yeah, is, big time. So... You know what you said just about Jay Z again. We haven't spoke to these people, but the way they move and speak, I can apply it to my day to day. Yeah, big time. So, put in your top three. Who besides Jay Z? What What would be like business wise, life wise, like uh, top yeah, three that you follow? Uh, I was for sure on the entrepreneurial tip. Uh, you know, Hove, uh, for sure Nip Nipsey Hussle. Um, hmm. I don't know. I have a very intricate playlist. Uh, so music wise, who's your Mount Rushmore? Yeah, currency. Mm. Uh, my Mount Rushmore is di- I, <laughs> it's too difficult, man. Because like I got, I like music, music for moods. Mm. So as far as far as saying like who's who's the best and stuff like that, yeah, that's that, that's, that's too difficult. difficult. Yeah, <laughs> but for sure, for sure, like yeah, Jay Nip and uh, Currency. Definitely for uh, for that hustler mode. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So with the the whole speaking again, I wanted this to be like a wanting to know the business aspect of building <clears throat> something of what it took for you to be here. So let's kind of take it back a couple of years. Like, how did be, you said you started in life insurance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I know that's crazy. I think it was a twenty twenty seven. 27 year I was selling life insurance um, for a company um, that provided like benefits to union members. Mm. So it, it was straight. It was a different hustle uh, because you are going into someone's home, you know, to genuinely help them. But as far as the reputation of, you know, what it is you're, you're doing has like a both positive and negative to it. Correct. So, you know, I think once I understood that, I understood business a lot better because, People are not buying the product. People are buying me. And so mm. every situation, you know, my manager was always say, uh, ABC, you know, always be closing. So, you know, everything you do, you know, <laughs> whether it's, you know, presenting yourself for the day or, you know, holding the door open for somebody, like you never know, like how doors are just open, you know. No Actually, what. I, I think Cindy, Cindy has said this earlier or like a couple of, weeks ago that when we get dressed for the day it's either you dress eh, what would we say like a bum or you get ready because you don't yeah. know who you're gonna meet yeah i oh, know i used to be suited and booted too <laughs> especially for work yeah <laughs> on some like jadena type level <laughs> so what what was that what did it take for you to get out of that out of that abc <clears throat> lifestyle like getting um, away from life insurance onto the next project because yeah. it's some for a lot of people it's scary to leave Nah, for sure, sure, for thing. sure. Um, you know, to me, I was just burnt out on the aspect of the of the management. You know, like for me, uh, the reason why I said earlier, like uh, it's a lonely road. Correct. And this is no no shade towards anybody, but this is just my own personal experience. I think that people are always willing to sell you portions of the dream, but they don't actually tell you how they did it. You know, there's a lot of people on YouTube. You know, and they make, you know, millions and have hundreds of followers. And it's like an algorithm to even what they tell you. For sure. So the information is, you know, breadcrumbs, you know. And at some point, you know, when you pay that exclusive top, you know, fee, you know, that's (laughs) when you get like, you know. Pay my course and I'll teach you. You know, no, I'm talking about even after the course, like. 
I'm talking about like going to Fiji, like to see like Tony <laughs> Robbins on his <laughs> island type shit, you know? Yeah. But, um, once, you know, people, people just don't explain what those jewels are. And so that lonely road is when you are experiencing it for yourself. Those are those, those are those gems. Yeah. yeah. That people, what I think with the podcast and how we're moving and how we're doing again, this is this will be episode forty two actually already. So our goal is right yeah. episode forty two. We did it. We're finally here. Um, our and I've said it. I set goals already. You know, I want to reach le, uh, episode one hundred this year. You will. So yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's just saying it. Hey, I'm gonna do it. But it's how we've said it, and I've been telling people like, dude. No one taught this to me. I've watched videos, and I had to learn firsthand how to mm. do it. You watch these other big podcasts, and, and in order to get that information, how they made it work, and how did they give, they don't really give you anything. Yeah. And so it's a lot of trial and tribulation, right? Like uh, Big time. It's, yeah, finding out the, being able to get the no's and still have a smile, because life is going to give you a bunch of no's, but those yeses, like, like yesterday was a yes for me, you know, at my event, I th- it it rained. I didn't expect Sold for it to too. rain. You Sold know? Out. So I still had that positive attitude. Um, I had a new staff member. I was, you know, training for the day. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, you know, we just got like a rush and it was just, it was just consistently busy and it's, it's difficult <clears throat> for, you know, how to plan for events because you got to factor in COVID is still going on. Correct. Um, you also have, you know, the weather, you know, our people coming out, et cetera. And then, when you look at the whoever planned the event, when you look at their social media and their following, you know, how did they promote it? You know, so it's a lot on the vendor because you're paying, you know, up front for, you know, whatever product you, Basically, you plan on uh, selling. A blurry a dream right there, a <laughs> yeah. blurry vision. So it's like. It's a leap of faith. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. when you do that and then, you know, you you plan for how you plan, you definitely don't want to undercut yourself. Like, right. man, I should have brought more. But you definitely don't want to over, you know, because yeah. I've done the over, you know, sometimes, and I you just had to just sit back and just. So what do you do with that food? That do you loss. just you just. Um. Well, if, if if you know, cleanliness is like key. Correct. So if you take care of everything how you're supposed to take care of it, you know, you can always freeze it. Mm. You no, know, but if you but see for my business, I can do that. I know for other people who have you know different kind of e- ingredients or seafood or whatever, you can't Tacos. really freeze it like that. Oh yeah. So. Yeah, for me, like, I've had the street dog before, and the stomach blew up, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I always keep that in mind when prepping and, and Get some pepto bismol if you need to. Everything. Like, you got to provide something that's, I want to, like, I want to be able to somebody to look at it like, I, I want that, but I want me, me and my stomach to feel good, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What it, when you go to events and you get nobody, and kind of similar to what you just said, when you get nobody coming through, no one going to your stand, mm-hmm. how does that feel? What is that like? What's your what's your process? Because how you said, even when you get the nose, you got to smile. But when shit isn't isn't going the way you thought it would, how do you get up and go the next day and say fuck it, let's do it again? Oh man, you gotta have that. Do you like Kobe? I love Kobe. Okay, so you, you, if you like somebody, you also gotta like their philosophies. Correct. Right? So that Mamba mentality, like, people don't talk about it other than on a basketball level too, too much. But or people just say the word yeah, Mamba mentality. But nah, for real, like, having, like, that focused vision. Like, uh, I've been to events where, you know, other people were selling and, you know, we didn't sell as much. And so I'm like, oh, okay. So I just learned, okay, what can we do better? So right. I'll look around in my setup. I'll look around at, like, how things are, w- what we're presenting. Uh, look at the demographic and everything is just learning because – you know, companies pay millions of dollars for focus groups. Mm. You know, we don't have the access to do that. So right. real life is your focus group. You know, the the people will tell you. It's the best, it's the best uh, teacher. Exactly. So, you know, learning what I learned now. And so when we do set up, uh, like last night, I had other a lot of other food vendors uh, that provided a different food than what I had mm. came and bought from me. And so this one dude... Uh, you know, gave me a little gym last night. He was like, have you noticed that a lot of food vendors bought from you tonight? I said, nah. He said, I want you to realize that you have something that it's a hot dog. Who doesn't like a hot dog? But also at the same time, 
you can eat one and, and it could be a meal. It's filling, but if you want to be a foodie, you can still bounce around to other carts and, and other, other people vending and stuff. And he was like, what you're providing too is like, it's like gourmet. So it's better. And he was just like, dude, you have, you have really, you have something going on over here. And this was an older cat who's been, he's been vending for a while. I looked at his Instagram and everything. So let's take a shot yeah, for blessings. that shit. <laughs> Gotta take a shot for that one. I mean, you're literally feeding other vendors. You're feeding other vendors and they're coming, not how you said, not just to try your your hot dog, but to bite into what you put into it, your yeah. your craft. Yeah, big time. Shit. For that, say less. You know, like always, taking a small little break to refill the cups. But Los Homies, what is the next step or what is the goal to get this? Uh, the next step is basically just out hustle the competition. Um, you know, there's a lot of people doing it, and so I just gotta just beat people over the head with what we provide. Mm. Um, next step, next step is uh physical location. Uh, the ideas that I have for the menu are different. It's not it's not gonna be just hot dogs. It's a it's a, it's it's a very interesting experience. Like um. I linked up with a local baker mm. so I can now start creating like my own bread from scratch. So that's going to be cool. Oh, like so you're, uh, you're going just like, yeah, big, like, big. like sneak peek. Like, uh, you know, when you go to breweries and they have a uh, um, flight, right? Correct. So I'm going to do the same thing for the hot dogs. So I'm going to be able to have, you know, different, you know, mini breads. And so people can have, the same hot dogs, but it'll just be in a miniature version. So, so you can, can try, try three different ones at a time. Yeah. yeah. Um, ideas like that or uh, for Valentine's Day. Uh, this is this is for, it's, it's kind of for the ladies, but it, it's for everybody. But I'm doing like a, a pink brioche bread. And so uh, there's another. Um, Anybody want to go on a date there? I know, right. We're good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's another friend of mine. Um, she has a, a hot sauce. It's called Mouth Wet. Um, so hopefully, you know, be collabing with that. You know, creating a special dog just for holiday, uh, just for that holiday. Mm. You know, so that'd be cool. Uh, my envision of it is like, like there's always like the cheesy like oh Valentine's Day stuff, but I think it's dope for like the. Uh, the like I like I hate Valentine's Day type parties. <laughs> like that, that shit is cool. So <laughs> we got a couple that, that hot dog is basically like it's inspired from that, like fuck Valentine's Day type shit. You know, that's why it's going to be like hot, you know, spicy you yeah. know, type shit. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, um, you're finding like different partners like to collab with and stuff. Yeah. Um, again, it's uh, about community. So let's talk about that. That's I have a, that a bunch of about friends, ask. you know, that are <clears throat> that are doing different things. You know, some of them are chefs, some of them uh you know, have different products, whether that's, you know, healthy products from CMOS, uh, things, et cetera, to, like I said, my homegirl, she has her own uh, business, and her her hot sauce is really good, and it's called Mouth Wet. So working with, you know, local people, um, the woman that I get my hot links from, um, it's in, she's uh, in L.A. off Slauson. It's called Mama's Chicken, and um, they're bomb. And yeah, clap uh, it up for those people yeah, right there, yeah. Uh, I don't know how long she's been in business, but she's been in business for a good amount of time now. And hers are, there's no preservative, so it's fresh frozen. Vegan she, friendly? <clears throat> uh, does she do vegan? One? Well, Los Homies is vegan friendly. We do vegan hot dogs. Um, I have hey, about, Cindy. I have hey, about four different options now. The menu is, is continuously growing. Um, Pleasing the people. Yeah. You got to please the people. So let's take it back to like Derek. Like what... The growing up part process, like, did what was your vision when you were, say, even elementary? When they tell you right where you want to grow up to <laughs> be, to like uh, senior year, like right. how does that process? That reminds me of uh, I think it's that's uh, Snoop. You, we can cut that here, right? Yeah, Fuck yeah! yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, I think um that one of the Snoop albums, I think it was like, what do you want to be? And he's like, I want to be a motherfucking hustler. <laughs> like that shit always resonated with me for some reason, like. 
Like, my mom, like, I love her to death, but she's not your average mom. Like, she was young when she had me. So, yeah. to me, I grew up with, like, an older sister. Mm. So, like, I was in third grade listening to, like, DJ Quick and, like, AMG. Like, I knew the words to, like, Black Pussy, like, <laughs> just to be, like, in you that know, black very, Mercedes. yeah. Hey. Like, I'm a little older, so maybe some people know that song and don't. But, yeah, so, like, I grew up with just no filter. Yeah. Yeah, so that was just... Something easy for me. So the what what do you think? What what can you tell us that was like that transition? Mm-hmm. Again, the only the reason I'm asking is because, I mean, in life we got to go through to oh, yeah, transitions, sure. right? Well, I grew up in the hood. I uh, well, not, not always, but there's a you know a portion of my life where I grew up in like what what some would consider the hood, whatever. But uh, it was in the candy house, and I don't know if everybody's familiar with the candy house, but pretty much it was always that one house in the hood where their grandmother or aunt or somebody was like selling candy, ice cream, sodas. And that was, that was the house I grew up in in Carson. And so I saw, um, you know, my brother and sister, it was their grandmother. I mean, she's like my grandmother too, but I saw her hustling. We would go to even the elementaries and she was, you know, having the chili Fritos and, you know, all that stuff. So Los Homies sells chili Fritos. Oh, um, shit. Uh, the house, the chili is just, you know, made in-house, though. But um, Did you know uh, uh, schools will take you down for selling shit in school? Really? Yeah, like, I know it happened in, in I'm mm. not going to name the high school, but <laughs> they got a kid selling, uh, like, hot Cheetos and chips out of his backpack to make uh, money. That's whack. And they got him. Yeah. They got him and they took it away, bro. You remember the Jolly Ranchers with the blow pop with the Jolly Rancher? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so like I grew up in that era. So like as far as being around that that culinary slash like street slight ghetto was fun like implement, mentality was always like implemented. It's always been around, you know. So I didn't know specifically I was gonna be doing that, but as far as the influence, yeah, it was all around. Like So what'd you want to be when you grew up? Yeah, besides, man. besides the how, how you said it, right now hustler. But what, like, what did you envision yourself? Because you said it earlier, you didn't imagine you selling hot dogs now. Yeah, no, no. I'm so to make it clear, I'm being exactly like the dude who I think I am. Like, you know, what I'm saying like people be like, oh, the motherfucker, you be the motherfucker you think you are. Correct. Like, I actually am, and like to me, I can walk around with my head high because I. I, I think what I say and I think what I do. And as far as what I wanted to grow up is, is just to be a business professional. So even though Thanks. I'm doing Los Homies and I'm doing, you know, a portion of the business from the ground up, I'm still being that person because, right. you know, You're still that motherfucker. one of the dopest shows, exactly. One of the dopest shows, you know, that has a cool concept is, um, um, is, is uh, something about the, the boss where the boss, like, Disguises themselves and then goes. Uh, oh, undercover, undercover, boss, undercover man. boss, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, you actually get to see like, you know, your company is who you are. So Correct. when you go back and see like, yo, your company, they think of you like you're an asshole, you're a dick, or something like that. Like to me, that's whack. Like I like to treat everybody fair. Well, that that's what they say. Like you know, you if you're gonna have a team, right? It, you got to treat your team, you know, the right way so they stick with you. You know, that's why, like, you hear a lot of restaurant employees or workers, you know, n- nothing yeah. against them, but you hear them complaining about their job left and right. It's like, bro, fucking quit. <laughs> yeah. Go work somewhere else. Then I also hear the other side, like, oh, my boss at, at McDonald's was always cool with me. Chill. It's like, okay, cool. But, I mean, to be conservative, and this is kind of like the next step, is going to the unknown, Everybody, I mean, if you ask them, what's your vision? What do you always want to be? What, like, what do you really want to do? I always wanted to do so-and-so, but, but I never, and then they go on whatever it is. It's like, why can't we do this now? Yeah. Like, my vision is just to be able to impact people. And I, I, know, I know a lot of people say that, so let me be specific as far as Let's what my impact is. My impact is I want to be able to educate not only my family, but the people, my, my, my conglomerate around me about financial literacy that's and, a big word yeah got I mean, no idea what that means but it <laughs> sounds really good to me i mean to me it's pretty much just about setting people up with the basic necessities of like what the game is like sure. literally understanding the game it blows your fucking mind because you see that so much is not being told or explained and being able to not only put your cell phone your mom dad Win- Wh- whoever around winning with sister. everybody feels yeah. better bro 
winning exactly. by yourself feels good, and yeah. yeah, I did it myself. But when you got a team winning, stronger together, you got a community, bro. Yeah, building the community is where it's tough because um, I don't. I mean, I don't know if you've ever gone through it. Not just right now, what you're doing with those homies, but before, like in your own community, like they're counting you out right away. Like, I learned that shit the hard yeah. way. Like, People don't right. fuck with you until you, like, make it somewhere else and then come back, and then, and then you hot. It's, it's like that in music or anything. Yeah, and yeah. then they, they talk so much shit about you, too, and, like, your dream and everything you're doing. Like, oh, like, that, that that's that's pointless. That's this. It's like, okay. Cool. I mean, I, I, I just think it has to do with human nature. Like, when you have an abundance of something, it's no longer special. You know, when, when you have something like at your fingertips, it's it's no longer that special. But it's when so you can have something, it's and, so then, easy. and then you see it on that screen and you want it, like we always want what we can't have, right? So that well, I th- I think that's why it is. And so you basically being an entrepreneur, you have to not worry about your circle of influence. You continuously stay smart and grow. But your goal is to get the customer that doesn't know you because that's the best judgment. They're only judging you off of that moment, that experience, that sale, that whatever. So for Los Homies, when people walk up to the cart, we have like a funny tagline like, hey, how how can the homies help you? Some some people smile, you know, when they hear that because it it creates like that icebreaker. That icebreaker of like, you know, still being yourself, still being an Angelino, like, right. you know, but, you know, because we all say, you know, what's up, dog? Or, you know, what's up, homie? You know, type of thing. And yeah. so, you know, how can that translate to like a Newport or like an OC or like a Dana Point, you know, type going, of thing? going to places where you're not expected to be, right? I think so. Uh, I would say, I would say not. Because do you, you think yeah. that people like expect hot dogs to be sold in the OC? Just like that, just like random. Well, see that that's the thing though. I I I can't wait to be able to break down that that barrier exactly. for those homies because I mean, hot dogs is more of a German thing if we want to be you know exactly politically correct. Yeah, but correct. as far as hot dogs, I mean, when it comes to baseball, hot dogs. When it comes to stadiums, etc., hot dogs. Hot dogs. Yes, so sir. now to give people an authentic LA feel to it, um, I think it's it's about that time. Um, but you know, it just has to be done right. That's all. It just has to be done right. You, you can't, you can't hire the homie, you know what I'm saying? But, but you, but everywhere needs those homies, you know, type of thing. Yeah. Because when you, Everybody when you hire the homies. homie, you know, like it's that you have to develop people that have your vision. My, my vision is like, I love That's... going to in and out, um, Sometimes when I can, I'll get out the car and I'll ask to speak to the manager and I'll just like pick his brain mm. and I'll ask him about, you know, how long have you been in and out? Um, how's it been? How's the pay? And I heard it's great. I love their structure. They like they take care of like you get what you pay for. So right. they pay their people well. They educate them well. And then they want you to go back to school. Right. So say if you want to do accounting, but you right. got to take a job in and out. That may not be something you want to do, but. How dope would it be if In and Out wants you to go back to school and do accounting for them? Right. You know what I'm saying? So like everything is like in house, and right. so that's that same family, you know, type of aspect. So, so you're trying to bring that into exactly because there's so many, you know, beautiful and gifted black and brown, you know, individuals that have that same capability, but their the resources around them or the availability just wasn't there. Yeah, I think that that's what you're saying right now. Also applies to like what we're doing. And taking back a little bit what you said earlier, I've always said it. I'm trying. I'm not trying to reach just the people that I know and that know me. <clears throat> I'm trying to reach the people that don't even know about us, that yeah. don't know me, that don't know the team. Why? Because I want them to tap into what what is being spoken, and being unapologetically ourselves. Like you know, this platform, hey, you could be you, talk your story, say your story, and hopefully somebody that listens in gets inspired, gets motivated. And if you don't like us at one point, shit, I hope what we do, you want to do opposite. (laughs) But it still helps you out in some sort of way. But it's the same thing. Like, obviously, everybody here, they all have their own business. They're all doing something. Yeah, It's like, all right, how can we all collab together? How can we all bounce ideas off each other? Because it is about the community. Like, if you have a community that says no every time you bring an idea, bro, it's like, fuck, never mind. 
and, yeah. and big time too, because like when when you, you when you say community, people sometimes don't associate themselves with that. Yeah. So for the other type of listener, like this is like like more for the underdog, like mm-hmm. someone who's actually like that other friend, like hey, you should do a business, and then the other friend is like, oh yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. But like being that underdog of like rooting for yourself, you know. So the, they did do that. Just, feel yeah. like everything's against him, and they got to be by exactly, themselves. Exactly because there's times where you know you you'll go wake up and do a nine to five for somebody else, right? Right. And you think like, oh yeah, I got a job, and so you're you're being paid, you know, for your time, you know. So you're you know time versus leverage, and so. Yeah. You know, when you do that for yourself, people don't understand that. You know, you don't understand what you need to give up to get what you want. It's a huge difference. And so I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with that. And it's a continuous struggle. You think there is an entrepreneur because you got to wake up and sometimes you got to, you know, you got to prep. You got to do things that you normally didn't want to do or normally didn't do. And then sometimes it's just doing things where you don't know if there's going to be a return or not. Like you got to get out there and do some guerrilla marketing for yourself. So more, more people in your uh, concentrated area, which is like geo targeting so that they know that Los homies is in the area. No one's going to pay you to do that. So if I, if I, if I set up in the park, but if I show up, you know, three hours earlier to, you know, put, you know, guerrilla marketing about Los homies, in the area you know no one's gonna tell you to do that and so that's like a portion of like the secret sauce of like what it's gonna take to make it what it's gonna take is what everyone else is not doing correct yeah it it's within you what do you want to make your business of what do you want to make your vision of do you want to be what anybody else tells you it's going to be or do you want to make it what you want it to be yeah so i mean for you like at what point what trial or tribulation did you have to go through besides those homies, like, you know, in your personal life that you had to make a decision right then and there? Oh, man, like, you got to be comfortable with your pockets being broke. <laughs> For real. Um, you been broke? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, when you when you start something and, and you're putting, you know, your all in it, your all is, you know, sometimes, you know, your your bills, your your financial situation, like, Facts. You're you're investing in your dream, you know, and some people will say that it will be the gamble, but you're investing in yourself to for sure to get that next outcome. You know, there's this it's like a, a maybe an old picture or whatever, but it shows this little girl with a one teddy bear, you know, and she doesn't want to like give it to the the person in the picture what appears to be like God, right? And he has like a thousand, you know, teddy bears behind him. It's like one it's like that that thank you and you're welcome, you know, that give and take. And, you know, you just got to just be ready, you know, for that and prepare yourself for for what that is. And so to me, the life insurance and, and the different business things that I've done, it, it's it's allowed me to align myself to be prepared for the punches, uh, plan for it, and also, you know, what to do when, when the win is there, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and also being able to see a win, that's major. Being able to see a win, because you could just think, like, okay, like, Los Homies only does hot dogs, so we'll only do events. But, like, I see wins in, like, so many different areas where other people don't see wins and, like, set up situations that allowed me to be in, you know, potential conversations for up-and-coming things to come to where you normally wouldn't think an actual hot dog vendor would be there. So, it's cool. You got to be in the unexpected. Yeah. What? So... Take your number one advice to a young entrepreneur that's like in the edge, like to start, not to start, but has an idea. What what would be the best advice you think you got that you could give to them? Um, be yourself, like like be the fuck you <laughs> for real. <laughs> um, that and then also uh, have a have a focus group. You know, and these are going to be some, you know, individuals. I would say get different type of people to be your focus group because you don't want the same type of opinion. Like if you ask all your homies, all your homies, you know, whether 
you guys hang together, y'all kind of like dress alike, think alike, or something like something alike in yeah. in some sense. And so you want to have different type of people because if your product or whatever you're trying to appeal to is a mass appeal, which is everybody, then you need to ask everybody. Yeah. Second, you need to be, <laughs> you know, prepared for what they say. Because to be honest, <laughs> like when I was saying it's a lonely road, and uh, to me, I feel like it's a lonely road right now because like, Everybody is 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 gonna see Los Homies the way I see Los Homies pretty soon. Yeah, I'll I'll, ju- I'll just keep it like that. So like when you when you you know nobody sees you at night you know shooting free throws you know late at night you know they just see yeah. you know you actually during the game you know because the camera's on you. But when you're actually shooting those free throws at night by yourself when the gym is closed, to me that's. Something beautiful is created there, the, and it's the it's something that nobody can take away from you. It's it's a it's it's a little bit more than a vision because it's like it's like your theme song, and like when 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 things get slow, whatever, like that theme song just get louder and louder, and you're like you just you're like, you're, like right. the, you're in your and you're in your zone, and that's yeah. something that I've always said it like uh, since since I coach and everything, like no one's there. We practice late at night, like mm-hmm. five to eight. Yeah. No one's around, and I always tell him, like, bro, no one's here to see the fucking work. <laughs> no one's here to see the work. Yeah. But you know when everybody will see you at fucking at five p.m. when game time is on, yeah, and you come and see us for an hour. Yet no one's here to see us three hours into this fucking practice, right? The good and the bad, and that's where I take everything here. Like, I'll do my research. I'll look at other ideas, but I I had to take this idea to where like, all right. I know I'm sacrificing this, but if I give this up, then to me, is how you said, this is my heartbeat. This is yeah. my, this is my rhythm. I'm going to stick to the rhythm. Yeah. I love this beat. And if I give, and I think to everybody else, like, dude, if you give this up because someone told you to give it up, mm-hmm. you should have never started. Exactly. It and, and the accountability is there because now if you were to ever stop, you know, your podcast, people then be like, Oh, what happened? You know, and, and to me, like for those homies, like I don't, I don't want that to be, you know, because there's so many people that I are strangers to that, that believe in it. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying type it's of so thing. It's so crazy, and it's just like, and I could, I could never, you know, do that because, again, like I said, I see it like a in and out or like a raising canes, and I'm thinking f- not only for myself now, but I'm thinking for you know my future self and and my family members, etc. That that honestly, that's where we. After I took the first episode out, and this was literally 2021, like, a year ago today, so what the fuck? We're a year now. Anyways, <laughs> it was that. I said, once I put this one out, everybody's either going to tell me, go ahead, keep going, or wait for it. All right, look, he yeah. started it, and he gave up. And I put the second one, it was the same thing. And me, it was something in the back of my head. All right, I got to keep going. And not for anybody yeah. else, but for myself to know that I kept this shit going and I could stick to something. And yet, here we are, episode 42, 20, a year later, we're still going strong. We're still, a lot of shit to come yeah. through. But it's the planning and how you said that you have a lot of shit planned for those homies. The way you're speaking about it, there's like tears to it all. Yeah, we all got something. We all got something of, of value to share. And if you don't believe that, then that's that's bad. <laughs> so you just got to tap into your creativity. I mean, to me, my creativity, I just, uh, it, it morphs too. Like, that's the cool thing about, you know, art or creativity. It pushes you out of your comfort zone. So sometimes you can think like you want to do something and then you stop because it feels uncomfortable. And then you're like, nah, I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't, I don't, I don't want to do that no more. But actually, that's the thing that's like, that's the sign. For but sure. we just don't understand like what the sign is. Even if it hit them in the front of the face, they still wouldn't know what that sign <laughs> Man, is. Yeah, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You know, that fucking yeah. phrase has been sitting in the last couple fucking weeks. <laughs> you can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. For real. But I think, and I posted this video the other day, and I'll shout out Cindy, because Cindy was the one telling me, you could give advice to so-and-so every single fucking time mm. until they're willing to listen or ready to listen to the truth, then they'll listen. <laughs> he was like, so don't say anything. Wait for them to ask you. Yeah. I'm like, you're fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Because, and I said, I was telling him, 
as there's a lot of a lot of us. I had to go through it, or shit. I don't want to listen to you. I don't want to. I don't want you to tell me the truth because I don't want the truth to set in already. Right. Until now, it's like, all right, fuck it. Tell me how it is. Let let me know and let's grow from there. Let's yeah. Let's be outspoken. A lot of people do not want to be outspoken because one, they don't want to deal with the repercussions. They don't want to kill relationships. Communication is dead, man. Due to due to all this shit, communication <laughs> is dead. Nobody wants to talk no more. Like call me, Facetime me. Yeah, like <laughs> send voice messages. Dude, you got a homie, or or you're in a relationship, and 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 you want to speak up, and you can't. So you rather just be frustrated and shit for like a day and a half when it could easily be worked out with like a. 15 minute conversation, however good your guys' communication is, yeah. you know, conversation. And like, that's all it is, just talking. It's not words. Like, yo, I grew up in situations where I seen people get like fucked up for like smaller shit. So, like, to be with a, a motherfucking, like, yo, you, we can't talk. Like, that's, yeah. that's crazy. So, yeah, man, people just got to get back into just showing more love. That's all it is, because love is tough. And people just got to get back to showing each other more love and just communication. But tough love or, yeah. like, nice love? Nah, it's no such thing as tough or nice. Like, love is love. Like, you can love it and you can not love that motherfucker at the same time. So love is love. It's just It just is what it is. Like, yeah, I, I think uh, this, this generation, <laughs> man, it's soft. It's soft. And, and we have so many taboos you have to watch out for. And so... The best advice I'll just say is just communication. People have to talk. And when, and when people can get to the chance where communication is good and, and people can talk, man, things just flow. Like, the universe just flow. Like, yeah. I, I meditate. I'm a huge, huge meditator. Um, I try to do it twice a day, for sure, once a day. If I don't do it for the day at all, I feel the unbalance because you ever just, like, uh, do you skate? Nah, my big okay. ass can't skate. Mm, let's see. Do you dance? Oh, I love to dance. Okay, so so when you dance, like so, it, something just take a rhythm, right? Correct. Especially like when like a certain song hit, you don't give a fuck who on the dance floor. It just hit with you, right? Oh yeah. So the universe work like that shit. It's just it's just like that that little flow, and when you can find yourself in that balance of what that flow looks like, and not and not like uh, if someone's having a bad day. If you can just realize, like, yo, bro, like, I'm not the one in your way. Yeah. You know, if, if you can realize that, then whatever that person has going on just goes that way. Because you don't have to inherit that shit. Damn. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, just simple. And people think it's harder. Yeah. yeah. We, 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 make, we make it to where everything is just impossible. Yeah. Where we can't communicate because that person doesn't listen. We can't yeah. do this because that or that. Like, hey, why, why can't you just take a different approach? And that's why a lot of businesses from the hood don't be making it real shit because that customer service aspect. Like, I love Chick-fil-A. I love their corporate structure yeah. as far as, like, their customer service and shit. That shit is top-notch. Like, Los Homies will have that. Oh, We yeah. have it now, but, like, that'll be, like, the standard. You fucking like, yo, want like how can the homies help you? You <laughs> get an order and, like, oh, would you like this? Would you like that? Like, yeah, fucking, you drive up and how are you? Exactly. What can we get you? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, damn, I want all of this. Yeah, right. And but you know what? I think that's a that's a great one to end on the communication. If you don't know how to communicate, even in your own circle, mm -hmm. I think you should move on from that circle. You should be able to communicate and bounce ideas. You don't like something, say it. Yeah. And instead of staying quiet, turn around, go with a different friend group and then talking shit. <laughs> Man, <laughs> right? Yeah, you hit the nail on the coffin with that. Yeah, right. but I mean, yeah, I mean, choices, man, choices. People just, you know, choose to do what they want to do. So you just got to just stay away from it. Well, but e even in business, like um, when you have, you know, those choices of like not being associated with certain folks or or just standing alone, yeah. you know, and 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 it, it's okay to do that because you have to. You have to believe in yourself. If you don't one thousand percent believe in yourself, how is somebody else gonna believe in you or what you're selling or your product or whatever? So hey, no one can believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Yeah. So I heard time. it from actually I heard it from somebody else. I can't believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Yeah. So when when you're ready, go ahead. But until then, <laughs> subscribe and tap in because episode forty two was sick.
Tap into those homies when we're back up. Los Homies LA, Instagram. Uh, yeah, just follow the Instagram for the schedule. Say less, episode 42. Let's go.